Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 185, April 1st. No fools here. We have a whole lot of things to triage. I apologize to everybody when we said that we were going to be doing this at 2 o'clock, and then I went off, my brain checked out, and I rescheduled this at 3.30 because I looked up on the Internet, and this said that Sean would not have to get up early in the morning if we put it at 3.30. And then he got up at early in the morning and said, hey, where's the meeting? So my apologies to all of you. We're here, though. We're here now. This is what sent out this earliest week. We are at 3.30 Pacific time. Well, 3.40 since we were spending 10 minutes gathering all these issues to talk about today. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to do triage. Lots of triage. Probably not a lot else uh, besides that. As always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, and watching later. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of time on GitHub. So let's go do that. Bob, you ready? Ready. Let's go. All right. Um, starting at the top, Sean has brought back the whip for this. Is there more to discuss? Um, I don't know if there's anything more to discuss. This is still before. Um, Sean, you're still interested in doing this. Just, oh, we need to add a label. There's never put in a milestone. Got it. I am not signed in. I'll let Bob do that. Why am I? All right. All anyway. right. Yeah, great. This should go in four, right? Because you're going to have it ready in four. Yep. All right. Then that was easy. Let's not dilly-dally on these things that aren't going to take long because we have plenty more to do. Um, Wix CA Targets has unsupported constructs for SDK-style CS proj. Um, yeah, we don't build SDK-style CS proj custom actions. Yeah, we don't support any of this. This will all be coming in 4.0, though. Um, through your NuGet package. Uh, no, not ours. Not yet, anyway. I do have plans to go discuss about maybe taking that over so we can make it correct. Um, SDK style, we're not really doing this in 3. Um, and 4 has a different way of handling all this. Because um, 4 will come down as NuGet packages and all that kind of stuff. I guess we just put this in four, right? Or close it because it's not applicable in four? What do you guys think? Um, probably should look at the pull request. I did. He just made these changes to the the targets files to work around uh, differences in SDK style projects and normal projects. Just a bunch of, well, not a bunch, a few small, a few targeted changes of trying to hack around these things. And then he has this hack to put the after compile, which this name wouldn't work, but. Um, yeah. Because apparently. Uh, I'm, I'm fine leaving it open for verifying that. It actually works like in this four? in four. Yeah. Well, I think we have to redo these targets a bit in four, but okay. All right, let's put it in four, um, and we will make sure that the it, that these targets work correctly in. Four. I don't. Know. The CA targets work in four. I mean, that's what we have to do. Is produce the DTF custom action thing as a new package so it can work. Mm, and that, that's just yeah. work. That's not this. That's that's just work. That's known out there to put DTF in the new way of shipping it. Sorry, I, I, I'm i used to the fact that DTF is already a NuGet package. I hadn't considered the custom action build aspect. Yeah, so I don't, this, we're not taking this in three. We're doing this in four. I think we should just make this yeah. go away. Okay. And it will work in four. Default Payload, default of payload suppressor. This one was like, I was like, there's nothing wrong here. It's behaving the way it should. The problem was what? That his MSI was validating. Yeah, the problem here was that the MSI was failing to validate its contents. And then, Bob, you said that we should suppress the documentation. The documentation is wrong. It doesn't say it defaults to yes? Correct. Ah. Fine. Uh, who 
wants to fix this? I'll take it. All right. Great. So we changed the default and forgot to update documentation. That's not right. Yeah, it was it was changed on the packages, but not the payload element. Bootstrapper failure with multiple attached containers. You can't have multiple attached containers. That's not supported. I expect multiple attached containers to work seamlessly. No, they don't. <laughs> so what did he do? He created a, a cascading cab. Yeah, so he's got a more than two gigabyte exe here. Yeah, that's going to be the most common request for multiple attached containers. Yeah. So he actually implemented this. How? Oh, did he put it here? Fix for multiple yeah, attached containers. Ugh. Larger than two gig. Yeah. <laughs> You're having an executable that goes larger than two gigs. That sounds unlikely to work. That sounds terrible. Why would you do this? Where's the native code? Is the native code? I don't know. Yeah, that, that was kind of surprising. It, it He didn't touch it, so I think that meant burn, burn already supported it. <laughs> it's the compiler. What, how? Container size zero. How? Well, there's already support in, in the engine for multiple attached containers because the UX container exists. So I'm I'm not mm. or I wouldn't be entirely surprised that multiple containers are supported. Because the UX container is special only in that it's the first, right? Well it's named too, but Okay, fair. It surprises me that the we can walk through all of the oh is he manually creating these containers? Oh, it's authored. Huh? Isn't it authored? Where is this at? Read until first attached container. Uh, this is pulling it apart. The attached containers. Container slot, slot by, uh, that's extracting. Where is the cab creation? Uh, Scriber, no. No. Oh, uh, that's not good. How did that disappear? Hmm. Where am I missing the part where it creates multiple cabs? If you author the containers manually. Oh, I see. You can. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, so you can then say. Author each one and then mark it as attached. packaged, packaging, attached, or embedded, or whatever the. And then it will just put them all on there. Oh. Interesting. I guess it works. It was closer than I thought it was. Well, what do we do with this? I think we either have to decide to support this or we need to block it in the compiler or the binder or whatever. The binder, yeah. Hmm. My my only question is whether this is actually useful. Like, can you create 
a, a compressed bundle greater than two gigs because of this. I'm sure you Separately, know. it's it's an interesting question. At, you know, is there some is there some kind of potential perf win by you know building containers and sharing them somehow? To answer the question of whether we should consider this at all, there, those are two reasons. If it works to create a big, big compressed bundle, okay, yeah, maybe there's something there. Um, is there any value in having support for multiple attached containers otherwise? If it's true that the engine already supports this, then you know you can argue it's a good thing to support. I'm just not sure of the value. I'm just two multi over two gigabyte executable. That's crazy. I don't disagree with that. And then it works. Now, couldn't you run into this if you had too many files as well? Or is there no file size? File? No, you're right. There is a file limit too, but. I... 64K, right? Something like that. It's a lot of files. All right. So, well, let's start with an easy, I hope, question. This is something we would take into 314. Well, easier question. Would we support this? Do we want to support this in four? Right? Do we want to support this code? Like, he gets it right, puts it in the right shape and form. In four, do we want to keep maintaining this to allow people to create more than two gigabyte size executables for installs? Well, so my thing is beyond that, is there any value in, in supporting in having multiple attached containers or multiple containers even? I mean, if you have too many, I would think it'd be more reasonable for you to want thousands of files than to want a several gigabyte EXE. Yeah, there's something to that if you have, you know, a bunch of loose payloads. <laughs> a node app. Um... That isn't. In a compressed MSI, sure. Right. This is a burn uncompressed. Yeah, this is an this is an uncompressed MSI. All of your MSIs are yeah. All of your MSIs have loose files, and they all have thousands of files. Then you can get up there without hitting over two gigabytes. Possibly. That's probably the more interesting case. And Burn supports it already. Presumably. Yeah. So would we take this in four? Under those requirements, I suppose. Can you spell, please? Yeah, I'd be okay I with it. I wouldn't mind taking the feature. I didn't look too closely at the code itself. All right. So this PR has to go against four first, though, because that's going to be the big thing. And then 314. Definitely not 311 too, or whatever that was targeting, because that was missing. But that had purposely 
nuked some changes that came in in 314. So I don't know what's going on there. All right, so I guess well, that's the thing. Let's see it against four, what the change looks like in four. Because the burn bundle build code uh, the, 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 is all working now. So he should be able to do this change there without having to worry about me breaking him. Because the only thing I have left is patching and merge modules and instance transforms, which are all on the MSI side. Is this something you'd, you'd take in 3.14? I don't know. He's already done the work against 3, so rebase it against 3.14 is a thing there. But you definitely sure. need to see it against 4 first. Because I don't want to do the work to bring that code to 4. I have enough other... I've done enough porting work. I don't want to do any more. Well, especially not something this complicated. Yeah, that and that issue is just going to get more and more common Um as four shores up and we look at bigger things yeah, than three. I know. And we need to go and mark the three archive to whatever discourage people from thinking about putting changes there and stuff. So there's a way of doing that. So Yeah. I I know, I know, I know. We need to finish four. <laughs> That's the only way we solve that problem. We need to do that. Right. Well I'm sorry, I'm I'm just I'm just commenting that I, I'm not entirely on board yet. That this I, should I, go into three fourteen. Yes. Oh yeah, I, I don't know about that, but he's already done the work for three fourteen or for three, so we can debate that change. But if this feature is going to go anywhere, it has to go in the four first. There has to be the four change first. Right. Or at right. least the same time. And I'm just now, you know, uh, how do we put this? We consider this change, but it has to go into four first. Is that the messaging? No, I think Sean says he's interested in it. And given Sean's interest in burn, if he thinks this is an interesting feature, then it'll go in four. Will it go into three? That's always a debate of, you know, I'm not huge on, this hasn't been a high demand feature. This is like for features that we've done in 314, ARM. All right. The people have asked for that, right? ARM64, sorry. You know, that's a, a wide thing. This is painfully niche, but you know it could also be that Nier did this because I know Nier um, did this for a customer, and he has to publish this change as part of the um, sure. requirement. So he went. Some customer said, "I want this." He did it. He made it happen. He published a change, and he's never coming back for it. He's like, "I don't care. I don't want to support this anyway." Um, and then I don't know where that customer lands because we're gonna be like, <laughs> "We're not supporting that." Good luck. You have to go privately maintain your Wix build with that crazy change in it, right? So, um, or he can do it in four. And if he doesn't want to, and Sean thinks it's really interesting, then maybe Sean wants to bring it over. But I'm not, you know, that's up to Sean. Um, I think .NET Core support is far more interesting than this. So, so to summarize, Sean thinks it's interesting, and given Sean's um, general oversight of burn, this could go in four. Don't know that we'll do the 314. We can debate that another day after it is in four. I really don't want to spend a lot of time until he does the four thing. Um, or he asks, then we can debate it. Um, so four, if he wants to do it there. I think that's the answer. And if he wants to try to make it for 314, then we can talk about that. So, all right. Yeah, that works. Okay. And we are three down. No, four down. Whew. Thank goodness, four down. Restart doesn't work. Oh, restart doesn't work for non-elevated burn installers launched on Windows Server 2019. Windows Server 2019 has decided to remove the shutdown privilege from non-admin users. How annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think this is actually the same as the bug. It mentions it somewhere below. This one? There's like no. Four, five, nine, five, four, nine, mm -hmm. nine. This one? I think, yeah. I mean, basically, this Burn needs servers. to handle the case. Well, uh, Burn needs to handle the case where the user doesn't have the permission privilege. to shut down. And pass it off to the elevated one? 
Yeah, or it's possible that the elevated one can't either. Yeah, that theoretically. Be, uh, if, if we had to pump an additional message to have the elevated process trigger the reboot, mm -hmm. that, that's reasonable as long as you have one. And hopefully if you're doing a pre-user bundle, you're not going to do anything that requires a reboot. I mean, you kind of have to handle both cases where the bundle wants to restart, but you don't have permission to. So yeah. maybe the elevated process can do it for you, but it's possible the elevated process can't do it either. Yeah, so I guess it's the, the an error code has to come back that says that restart button didn't do anything. <laughs> when you ask Burn to restart for you, the system said no. I don't yeah. I don't think the UI is around anymore when we do that though, is it? Because the UI says, hey, please go try to restart for you and burn tries, and then it's like, oh, I couldn't. Well, people are going to ask that you don't even show the restart button in the first place in that case. Yeah, I guess we can query the privilege, right? If We can check the privilege up front and set, what, a property that says uh, you can't restart. What can restart? Local system then, I guess? You need the privilege, so if they haven't given the privilege, if they only give it to this certain user, this certain group, then you're going to have to, yeah, you'd, have, you'd either have to log in as the oh, right no, person it, or... It says run as administrator, so he says administrators still have that. I guess, I, I think the other bug is the more general oh, case as where... administrator. Not administrators. Ah, I see. Oh, interesting. So, basically, I think this is a specific instance of the more general case than the other bug. Yeah. Yep. So, it sounds like we need both. We need to have the ability for the elevated process to try the reboot and we need a way to detect it. Yeah. Detect the missing privilege. Yeah, the elevated process is going to have to communicate back saying, um, I can't shut down either. <laughs> 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 and you probably can't either, but I won't speak for it. It's basically the user process will be like, all right, can I shut down? If so, then you don't have to bother this, the elevated. It, then you can ask the elevated, hey, can you shut down? And it can say no. So then nothing can, then you just can't restart. Yeah. Okay. That sounds annoying to write. <laughs> um, 4X and someone could pick it up. Or Sean, do you want to do it in 4O? Or where are we going with this one? Uh, I don't know when I would get to it. <laughs> yeah. All right, it goes in 4X. I mean, this is, this is nuts, man. I wonder why they're doing this. They're trying to reduce people accidentally restarting machines, trying to reduce the surface area that people that can forcibly restart machines. I wonder what yeah, the probably goal is Stopping here. people accidentally doing it. Yeah, you're an admin, but you are not an admin that can restart machines. Uh, okay. Yeah, like you're a domain admin. You have ultimate power over thousands of users. Yeah. But no, you can't reboot. I don't know. All right. Uh, yeah, Forex. That's that sucks. Um, Visual Studio problems when building with Nuke. Cool. Go find a. Yeah, they can go follow us against Nuke. I don't care. I'm not going to spend time with that. Some niche build system. If they find a specific thing we're doing wrong, then maybe we can fix it. But whatever. Hey, feature requests without filling our template. Thank you. Um, application pool environment variables. Sure, someone could write that. We can toss that in 4X unless somebody wants it. Sorry. Uh, this is a feature request. 
someone could implement it if they want. On that previous bug, this is external. They can go fix their problem. If they find out that we're actually doing something wrong, then we look at it. But I don't even know what asset cache is. Assets cache, that's not something we do normally. And them is build, and other things don't care, so they can go address their build thing. All right. Okay, so normally we'd say, hey, we're done with triage, but not today. We are going to carry on with a couple other things that people want to talk about. Bootstrappers delete prematurely and upgrade causing the installer to fail, and Sean seemed to think that this was resolved. Oh, please take a look so we know your issue is fixed. Oh, so this has been gone for a long time. We think we fixed it. I'm with Sean. I think we probably should close this. Bob? Opinions? Yeah, sure. It's been out for a long time. He never came back, so we're going to assume that he's okay. Root certificate install fails with code 26352. This is what my data grace is hanging around. There's a lot of discussion about this and trying to figure out the root cause of it and pull requests here and here. Let's look at four. Maximum allowed flag. Really? So is this a confirmed fix, Data Grace, or is this a theoretical, we think this fixes, but because we've never seen the problem, we're not sure? Because the latter is the problem that we've had quite a bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, Jason, great. I'm all for real names here. Um, so we have a confirmed fix. This does it. And it doesn't have any other side effects? I don't know what other side effects. Store maximum allowed. I guess if it's like, please give me as much as I can have here. All right. So yeah, It's basically asking for right permissions. Oh, Jason Stevenson. All right. See, this is great. I love this name. Um, all right. So the question is, do we take this in 314? Uh, here. This is not. This is an yeah. This is an ancient bug. Do we take this in 314? I'm gonna take a quick. I mean, look. I think it's pretty simple, so I would say yes. And roll it up in our next build whenever we might do one of those. Yeah. Yeah. No, Jason, I appreciate the write-up on the mailing list. That really helped kind of walk through it. The one thing I wasn't clear when skimming the email, and I admit I don't always have time to read the emails thoroughly, was whether you confirmed it fixed or whether you thought, is like, well, this should fix it, um, but because we can't reproduce it, which has been the problem we had for a long time with that. All right, so wow, milestone four, I guess, and then we go take those pull requests. Sean, you want to do the pull requests? Sure. All right. Yeah. And then, Bob, can you put this in the correct milestone? We only get one milestone, don't we? We need to shut down three. How many times have I said that? Anyway, cool, excellent, yay. One fewer bug in the mess of bugs with someone that actually could reproduce the crazy issue that this has been. All right, moving on. So do you uh, know when you would want to do a build? Uh, I don't have one right now. Give me another. Um, if we don't do one by the next meeting, we'll do one then. All right, I'm still kind of waiting for, I have some people poking me about these other things. So I'm like, I want to see how those resolve in the next two weeks. Okay, just curious. Yep. Uh, and if I forget, which is entirely possible since I am finally out of crazy compression mode, but I'm now picking up lots of things. If I forget, just poke me again and we'll do a build next week. The second PR had a build failure. This one, explicit request, okay. read, write. Okay. IIS extension is out of date with the latest extensibility. Ah, okay. Well, that's fine. We'll get that PR in there, and it will sit there until we get the rest of all of it. Sorry. I mean, the code the code is correct. That, that's not going to cause the build break, presumably. So we'll be good there. Uh, installer for 3.5, Wix 3.5, not allowing for multiple versions. So I, I think this was basically asking for the ability to have 
votive for one version of Visual Studio and being able to upgrade Wix and still keeping that. So basically I was reading this issue as side-by-side -side votive, which That's, I think we have now. We do have side-by-side -side votive, but... Oh, I see. The problem was it was VS 2010. When we dropped VS 2010 support, and all that kind of roundabout ways. Right. Okay. I agree. I think this is supported now. And if not, this person will, oh, this person's not coming back because this is a wet spot. Um, so I agree with you. Um, did you go through all 985 open issues, Sean, just looking for things to close? Uh, no. Oh, how did you find this one? Um, I had a small list of things I was interested in. Gotcha. Fair enough. All right, and I do agree, this does seem to be outvoted. And now that we've broken votive into tiny little pieces, one for each Visual Studio, then it's worked out better and addresses this problem. Awesome, thank you for finding that. Okay, now we're looking at issues that we've marked external that are still open. And if they're external, then they probably don't need to be open because we're not fixing them theoretically. Uh, uh, run DLL, sys setup inf, triggers an additional Wix burn dialog at the end of 32-bit window. Wow. Oh, the run once thing. Right. So I wasn't sure if we were going to go through these individually. I was just kind of curious why we were marking these bugs with the label and then not closing it. Well, we triaged, then I closed it, and then I reopened it. Oh, we'll take this in four to see if we can detect this state and prevent the second instance. So let's remove external or. Well, so this is the this was the X, the big XP problem, right? Right. This was the, the drivers trigger the run once execution. Yep. But so this is XP, right? Well, yeah, I never heard of it happening anywhere other than XP. It's getting really hard to do work, special work for XP. As in, it's way past time we just completely it. declared that we support it? Yeah, I mean, 4 really should. We haven't had this explicit conversation. We've danced around it. Um, I've raised it explicitly because, because we are required to use the deprecated XP yeah. library in Visual Studio. Yeah, we, we've got to kill it, right? It's deprecated everywhere. It's just dead. Windows 7 is dead. Come on. Mm, <laughs> that one, I, I, I know what you're saying there, but it's not going away for a long time. This It's the same place that XP was, you know, yeah, exactly. eight years ago. <laughs> Um, oh, Vista to be dead, too. I hadn't thought about Vista. <laughs> I haven't thought about Vista in a long time. Right. All right, so if this is XP only, don't care. Don't care. So do we get rid of it? XP only? I didn't see anything on here that actually said XP only. I know. But if you guys say it's XP only, then yeah, definitely get rid of it. I've never heard of it anywhere else. All right, let's get rid of it, and they'll bring it back if we somehow got that wrong. Error light. Cannot find the file. Ugh. Ruby. Running Vista on Wine. Oh. Wine tricks, candlelight. Sounds like a great thing if changes that's provided for. Sounds Wait, like wasn't this big here? You can now do a XPlat Wix. Yes. And is this where it's. <laughs> yeah, we had those guys that were going to do the Linux thing. And when I told them, hey, you could do it, then they were all quiet. It probably, maybe it'll change when we actually have Wix 4 running. 
Um, I think we should close this one. We're not going to fix heat, and we have a place for this to go in four if people want to fix it, uh, bring that thing in four as a feature. So let's go ahead and um, close this because we're not. This is not actionable, and we have another way of doing this in Wix 4 on .NET Core with the ability to swap out the native code parts to being wineable or whatever you have to do to make them run on Wine, or Linux for that matter. Actually, I guess they could be run on Linux native. They could be native Linux binaries. Anyway, that. Um, wine gives the cap. Yeah, and get rid of Wine out of the way of it. Yeah, so that's it. Allow default value on registry search. Uh, duplicate. The duplicate was closed. Um, I don't know why this is marked external. Who did? Who made that mistake? No idea. No, I don't think this should be marked external. I think this was supposed to be extensions. That's very possible. All right, that's not external. Great. Wix users dev forms post forwarded from Wix toolset as phishing. I think this has been fixed. This can be closed. Yeah, I, it, we haven't had this problem in a while. It took a while to get the spiff thing right, but I think we got it all sorted out. Or okay. SPF. So I, that can be closed now. All right. Um, so that's externals that aren't bugs. Where are we at? 460? Yeah, we'll go for a little bit longer. Um, Duplicate. Duplicates probably can just be closed. Uh, but I think we did everything going to do in 3x, so I'll leave it open. Affect SDK when deploying with binaries under this, when extracting the binaries there for such a reason. Yes, it does make it more complicated. We're not changing it in 3. And in four, this is look at packages yeah. place so the, the yeah. binary. Yeah, so this is all, yeah. Are we going to have a Wix, no, a .NET tool? Is that the new binaries.zip? I mean, there's going to be no point in having a binaries.zip at some point. Uh, no, that, at all. That, it's all NuGet package, right? Yeah, it's all NuGet package, so yeah. All right, Wix hangs on saving project, oh. It's the same code. Having multiple issues with the same island bug isn't helpful. Dupe of this. Is this still open? That is still open. I agree with Bob. We only need one of these. So that can be closed. Great. We are finding little things in here. This is fun. Sort of. Um, suspend. What is this the hyphen? This is they want support for the funky hyphen. Yeah, this is a feature and nobody cares about it. So no, suspend things are going to be open. These are just basically sitting out there for someone else to do that we're not going to get back to ever. Okay. So I think these are fine. It's like, yeah, it's, we're done with these. Someone else can look at them. Um, not a bug. Bin skim security checker. PDB, static, fine. I close this. This then, uh, then I must have reopened it. I reopened it. I think a whip is overkill. Uh, seems to be a duplicate of this. Oh, control guard field. Yep, great. Groovy. 5914, 5743, all that. Great. I agree. We can kill this one. So 5914 is a dupe of of 5743. Groovy. And we're done with things that could be otherwise. And this is down to what? We're going to come back and talk about that with four. And I think Bob's probably going to have to write a paragraph on that, so he's not done it yet. Awesome. Done with triage. Anything else people want to talk about?
uh, we got 10 minutes before we've been here for, uh, we started a little late. So 40 minutes so far. Anything else, Jacob out there? Sean, anything else you want to bring up that you didn't toss in before we got started on this meeting? Um, <coughs> um, hope everybody's doing okay out there. Keeping it calm. I don't wow. know if you want to talk about the modularizing the burn searches that I did. Uh, not today. Yes, but not today. Okay. Um, there, how's that for taking people's comments? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Jacob's quiet, so I assume he's all good out there. Um, all right. Well, that was a fantastic trip through triage. I hope everyone's doing okay. We'll be back this time working. I guess we got Jacob and we got um, Bob here. So is this going to work all right? I know this is going to work better for Sean than the previous proposal. Um, should I do, should we do 3.30 or should we roll it up to 3 o'clock? I'm, I'm open to discussion there. You had I guess it depends on how nice you want to be to the East Coast. Yeah, it's kind of balancing East Coast versus Australia at this point. I mean, I can do, I can do two. If you want to do it earlier. Oh, all right. All right, but let's let's do it. But, 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 oh. but. I mean, I do get to sleep longer when it's later. <laughs> but everybody's here. Jacob, any words from you? Bob, you were going to say, but. No, I was I was emphasizing Sean's but. Wait, that sounded wrong. Um, <laughs> it works. Any time really works for me. Because I don't think you're going to be doing it, you know, midnight Pacific time. So. Midnight Pacific. Actually, I could do midnight Pacific time. Um, um, as I was just saying, <laughs> like midnight Pacific time totally works for me. Um, aren't you guys up? All right, so this works. Um, all right, you know what? Let's let's see how three thirty goes again um, next week. It's a little bit. It's just at a time slot that kind of breaks up the, my afternoon, but I'm just one, so. Allows me to get home from work. If it was an hour earlier, I'd have to do the meeting at the office, which sometimes I see. You know, let's try this again. Let's do this. Let's let's um. We'll do this again um, in two weeks. So that's the fifteenth, fifteenth of April. Um, holy cow! Wait, how old is Wix in four days, three days? Yeah, now? there you go. How old? Twenty. Sixteen. Sixteen. Can drive. The Wix tool set could drive on Saturday. Right? No, on Sunday. April 5th, right. 2004. 454, right. It can drive on. It's scary that I know Wix tool set's release date is open source as well as my kids' birthdays. I don't know. All right. Um, all right. Well, then. Uh, yeah, so Wix can drive in <laughs> in five days. That's just kind of crazy. All right, on that note, we'll be back in two weeks after the Wix tool set's been driving for a week. I'm sure it's been hot rodding and doing donuts and everything else out there um, while being physically isolated from everybody else. Um, 15th April, we'll do it again at this time slot. Uh, we'll see how many issues we have. Uh, it's kind of fun having actually something to talk about in the issues. Um, if not, we well, even if we do, we'll probably talk about Sean's um, thing that he wants to talk about, and we'll see what else I've cooked up in the next two weeks since I'm finally able to breathe and getting my head and organizing my world and trying to decide what are the things I do next. So I uh, hope you guys are having a good time. Uh, take it easy. Keep your head low. Two weeks. We'll be back at this time slot. See you later. Bye. Wash your hands. Bye.